It is time for people to go home. Those were the words of the mayor of Seattle pledging to work with community leaders to peacefully dismantle the part of the city that's still occupied by protesters, better known as CHOP. It was now two weeks ago that Seattle police left the East Precinct just a couple blocks behind me here, and these barricades came up. But it's truthfully, it is hard to answer very simple questions about what is going on here because it is a complex situation with a lot of layers to it. I was really struck when I walked up to the zone from this side and saw this list of demands here from protesters, some of whom were the first to be in these streets saying they want the Seattle police defunded. They want that money going back to black communities and they want all protesters freed and those charges dropped against them. There is still artwork here that reminds you why this began. You'll see this incredible Black Lives Matter mural on this street behind me here. But what we're also learning is that the violence you're hearing about happening here, the violence that the mayor is citing as the reason why the police need to come back. Many people are saying we're here in a major American city. This is an imperfect society and violence and crime will happen. But because there is a spotlight on this community on these six blocks, it is given the mayor reason to use that as an excuse and bring the police back here. What is clear here is that there's no leadership and there is no longer the unified message that once brought people to these streets. And so what happens next and how can city leaders peacefully shut this area down then? These tents that have popped up on this park. You can hear a man playing drums he's assembled. They're behind me. Again, it's it's unclear who has taken hold of this space. Like I said, a complex issue with a lot of layers to it. And and now when the police has the police chief has said that that the use of pepper spray and and any chemical agents that that is banned through September force cannot be used here. Police are only allowed to use any sort of those chemical weapons if their life is in imminent danger. So this will be a phased process. As the police chief has said, it will take days. There is no timeline. Whatever timeline they have has not been explained to us. And there are a lot of questions here. What you see right now, this atmosphere that is very calm and these streets fairly empty. That's not what we're told it looks like at night. And now that's the question is, is what happens as different people move in depending on what hour of the day it is and how the police choose to meet the protesters they see. The mayor says because of what's been happening there, the city is possibly looking at putting out a disperse order for some of those overnight hours that could be enforced by community partners instead of police. Video from inside Capitol Hill organized protest zone, also known as CHOP, captures the violence this weekend that sent two people to the hospital. According to the King County Medical Examiner, one of the victims, a 19-year-old named Horace Anderson, did not survive. Today, Seattle's mayor says she's making changes. I am hopeful and confident that these organizations that we are in dialogue with and others will work to encourage individuals to leave voluntarily. The mayor and police chief both saying demonstrations are mostly peaceful during the day, but recently have looked different at night. There are also groups of individuals engaging in shootings, a rape, assaults, burglary, arson, and property destruction. And I have the police reports right here. We cannot walk away from the truth of what is happening there. Chief Carmen Best says people living in the area have told her the situation has escalated. Chanel Christopher, who has attended the protest at night, claims people have shown up in vehicles to harass demonstrators, and she wants to see police respond quickly to 911 calls. What's happening? There are residents, business owners, you know, all types of people that, that deserve the police to at least care, to at least show up. Why are they not going after these marauders. Police say they did respond this weekend, but were met by hostile crowds, preventing officers from quickly getting to victims. I care deeply about the community, but we need the council and others to support us and assist us in preventing further loss of life. There has to be an end to the chaos. They're going to be working to get officers back into that East Precinct as soon as possible. The mayor says that will happen in the near future. And the city is also looking at rethinking policing. That includes the culture of it and how it's funded.